is coming my way Wherever I go, hard luck is there to stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way For today's Grim Adventure, we find ourselves in Danvers, Massachusetts, visiting the old Danvers Hospital, the old asylum that's here. It's got quite a history, and today we're going to talk about it and explore it. Now, before we get too deep into this video, I want to point out a few different things. The first one being, this is no longer a working hospital here in Danvers. It hasn't been for quite some time. In fact, it stood vacant for quite a few years but now today you can come here and you can rent an apartment here it's been like, it's kind of like a high class apartment building now but can you imagine living in an old asylum well you can aside from being an old hospital it has a, a bit of a strange kind of history it was built in the late 1800s it was supposedly the inspiration for hp lovecraft's arkham asylum so much so that in the DC universe, Arkham Asylum from, you know, the Joker, it's all based on this place. Also, back whenever it was an, an abandoned hospital, they filmed the movie Session 9 here. So if you want to see what it looked like before all these people moved in, you got to watch the movie Session 9. Now we're going to talk about this a little bit later on, but really all that's left from the old asylum today that people are still living in is the main building more at the facade than anything else even though the walls the structure is still the same but if you look over here you can see that what was known as the bat wings of the hospital we're going to talk about that too those are no longer here instead it's these new buildings that they built on property with that being said our plan today is to walk the asylum the halls of the asylum as it stands today and document it I really don't think that there's going to be much on the inside from the late 1800s, but we're going to see what's here. But most importantly, we're going to go and check out the old patient cemetery. It's still here back in the woods. And that brings us right back to where we started this video. Almost the same exact shot, but just a little bit closer. You want to go inside, baby girl? Yeah. Let's do it. Now this is beyond beautiful. If you remember the last time we were here, they were completely renovating this place. Yeah, I do remember. It looks a bit different, but beautiful. I bet a lot of these bricks are original. It's a nice little common area. Some big windows, lights coming in. You can just imagine the history. It's really nice to see that they've turned this into what it is now. Basically, breathe fresh life into this building. But you can just imagine the history behind these walls. Now they gave us permission to walk the halls here as much as we want, as long as we're respectful to the guests. But for the most part, most of the renovations, the original structure, the rooms, the hospital, it's all gone. This is all new. Pretty wild though to be walking here, huh? I love the shape of the building. It's not traditional. It almost feels like it's still part of the old sanitarium because things were built for necessity. And I've never seen this kind of a walkway separate quite like this. And I'm, I'm itching to explore, which we have permission to do. The hallways definitely give off an old Asylum vibe, don't they? Just got in the elevator to go upstairs. See if we can get to a window and look out over yeah. top of the fields. I feel like 
I feel the energy here, and it's a happy energy. They definitely appreciate their history here, and they've taken care of it so nicely that I feel like it's kind of peaceful. So we just got off the elevator, and something caught my eye. Now, baby girl, the history of this place, right? Mm -hmm. As with all these old asylums from the turn of the century, they had a problem, a major problem with overcrowding. And once the main part of the hospital filled up with patients, mm -hmm. they started putting patients up in the attic as well as downstairs in the basement. And getting off the elevator, let me turn the camera down this way. If you look at the corners of the rooms, like the hallways, especially down here, you're basically in the attic of the place. Well, like the top floor. Right now we're on the fourth floor. But I got chills just thinking about that. Wow. Talk about quiet. This is like... Soundproof quiet. It's a little, a little spooky if I say so myself. I feel like I'm supposed to whisper. It is so quiet in here. Walking down the stairs at the first landing, we turn around. Can you see a ladder that goes up to the actual attic itself? I'm so tempted to go up there, but we can't. Oh, the history of this place. So right now we're on the third floor. Oh, some windows. I got this way. It's a beautiful building, that's for sure. getting ready to leave the third floor. We come up to the elevators and Jessica asks, wait a second, this place is a lot smaller than I thought it would be. There should be some other like wings to this because it's an old hospital, right? Now this is a great time to talk about this. The original layout, the original design of the Danvers State Hospital was in the shape of a bat, like the wings outspread. Kind of like that a little bit. Yeah, in fact, here's an old picture an aerial shot of how this building used to look, and you can see the wings coming off to the left and to the right. Now, for the most part, that design is still here. And they did that so each room on each floor would have natural light coming in, so there was nothing blocked. So if we were to keep going down this path, it curves to the right, or it turns to the right, and then it goes straight again, and then it goes to the right, and it goes straight again. And right where we're standing, this is the hub of it. The elevators are in the center of the hospital. Now with all the renovations, this is a map of the place. This is how it looks now. So this is the main entrance. This is where we first started the video on the inside of the video. This is the hallway that we just showed with the windows where I pointed the camera out. And we're standing here, looking down here, and I was talking about if it goes to the right and then it goes straight, it goes to the right again. So the original layout of the building you see this, this would be the head of the bat. This is like the shoulders. And then they would have two other little areas coming down. Those were the wings. Pretty neat, right? Crazy how things change. See, there's a design yeah. for everything. There's a meaning behind the madness. Such no pun shame. intended. Yeah. It's such a shame that some of the original buildings were lost. They were so beautiful. Now, just to make sure that the wings stop there, we're going to walk down to the end. Oh. And see if it stops. There's something else that I want to point out about this place. 
Supposedly, there's a pretty elaborate tunnel system that runs underneath this property. It went from the nurses' homes, the nurses' stations, whatever you want to call them, the buildings, up to the main building. It was like a hub with spokes from everything I read online. That's how they described it. And mainly it was built so people can walk to the hospital away from the elements because it snows up here. Yes, it does. Now, not too far from the hospital, still on the same property, is the old patient cemetery. And it's in the woods that's back behind where Jessica's standing. And we're here, you having fun? Yes. It's kind of, it's really cool. I haven't seen a dandelion in a very long time. Are you making wishes? Because you're supposed to wish on those. I am wishing for an eternal, peaceful rest of the people who are buried here. Now we were calling those things dandelions. We think they're dandelions. Because dandelions are yellow, right? So I is this the, right before they die, they turn into that, that wispy thing where you blow and they go off and they pollinate? Now, right before you get down to the cemetery, the cemetery is not marked, but you will find they have this memorial set up for the Denver State Hospital. It tells the story of this place. And what's really interesting about this, if you look behind the, the bushes there that right in front of Jessica, you can see the new houses that they've built. Now, if I'm not mistaken, right over here in this area, this is where the nurses' homes were, where the nurses lived that worked at the hospital. The very first plaque, there is a lot to read, but we're not gonna read it all on camera. But it does say the Danvers State Hospital, and there's a few things that we want to point out that we found interesting. The first one being this old photo from 1893 of the way the hospital used to look. Man, that's cool. The next thing we want to point out is this old diagram of the way the hospital used to be set up, and you can see the bat wings. It's kind of like a key, like a legend to this place. Now, what were you telling me, baby girl? I learned a new word today. And the word is convalescent. It means patients that are recovering from surgery. Oh. Now there's a couple other things there too. It says buildings for excited patients. And less excited And patients. less excited patients. There's the <laughs> boiler house. Pretty wild, Lavatories, right? Lavatories, ventilating shafts, and shuttered rooms. What do you suppose they did in the shuttered rooms? I don't know. The next one we're going to point out is labeled the institution. A whole bunch of photographs. Check out this photo from the 20s of the mail wing. Right above that, an 1878 engraving of the hospital itself. And right next to that, an enclosed sun porch added to the front of the brick exterior of both wings in 1921. That's one heck of a porch. And then the very last one says the people, and it's all about the people who worked here. Now, what were you pointing out, baby girl? In this photograph, you'll see five hospital trustees, administrative staff, including Dr. Julia K. Casey. My word, a woman doctor. What age this is. The description to this photo says a class of attentive nurses. I just like that you can see skeletons in it. The last photo to catch my eye is this one right here. It says the hospital surgery was located in a room designed for allowing in much natural light. One of the things I loved about this place, and I guess a lot of the hospitals from back then, they really relied on bringing in natural light. It was a form of medication itself. Well, the sun was coming out, but now it looks like it's gonna start to rain. But maybe it's just that Halloween season in Massachusetts that we've come here for. Now, with all the stuff that has changed over the years, them building these new buildings and people moving in and moving out, lives are once again living on this property. If you were to follow this pathway back and down into the woods, that is where you'll find the old Danvers Hospital Cemetery where the patients are buried. That is still there, and that is where we're heading right now. Well, it did start to rain, so we went back to the car and got our umbrellas. It feels appropriate though. Right? This time of year. Now the last time that we came down this way, it was pretty muddy. 
like it was a field. I don't know if it was a cornfield or not, but I remember our shoes got really muddy when we walked down I through this I remember that. Way. I don't know about you, baby ghoul, but it kind of has given me some pet cemetery vibes. Yeah, it's kind of soothing. Now you may have noticed that we got these giant black golf umbrellas. And this is not a plug for the business, but if you wanted to find umbrellas just like this, they're the best umbrellas that we own. We take them with us everywhere. We got them from Home Depot. They're like 10 bucks. They're massive. And uh, definitely great to film under. Now here's that dirt field I was telling you about. See what I mean? It's just past all these houses. Right down here in the woods, there's a little opening. You going in? Mm-hmm. I'm right behind you. I like that it's a little covered with trees. Feels like I'm finding a secret garden. All right. The old patient cemetery really isn't that big. It's just this plot of land, this hillside. There's a few different stones, but there's a monument down there that has all the different names of the people that are buried here. As soon as the rain lets up a little bit because it's starting to come down, we'll go check it out. Well, it looks like we got a little break in the rain. Here's the marker for the entrance of the cemetery, the Danvers State Hospital Cemetery. A little saying that says, the echoes they left behind, written right there underneath it. I think the first thing that we're gonna do is walk down the hillside over to those markers with all the names of the people that are buried here. Baby girl, be careful. Freshly wet grass. Now, as you can see, there are a few different tombstones here with names on them. Why does it always seem to rain every time we come up, come up to New England to do these kind of videos? Here's the first of the three monuments. It says, here rest former patients of Danvers State Hospital. With love, we remember your names. The ex-patients of the Danvers State Memorial Committee, 2002. And there are a ton of names. There's the second monument. That one's filled as well. And here's the last one. About a third of the plaque is filled. Even with all the changes and renovations to the hospital itself, this is nice that this is still here and they pretty much just left it untouched. And that people come still and pay their respects. I see a little pumpkin, a little Halloween mask. It's very sweet. Uh, it's really hard to see, but just on the other side of those trees right there is a business park. And you can actually type in to your GPS, the Danvers State Hospital Cemetery and it'll take you to the back of the business park, but there's no way to get back here. You kind of have to go to the old hospital itself. But even with all that stuff going on, it's incredibly peaceful back here. Now throughout the cemetery, there's a bunch of different stone markers. This one here, right at the entrance, has the number one on it. It says, in loving memory of Marie Rose Balter, nobody's child, 1930 to 1999. A resident of the DSH, Danvers State Hospital, from 1948 to 1968, a woman of strong faith who overcame many adversities during her life and helped others do the same. There's a quote that says, you remain always in our thoughts and prayers, forever in our hearts. 
The last time we were here in Salem, we came up here and paid our respects to the, the patients of the old Danvers State Hospital. Mm -hmm. One year later, close to the day, we come back. Any thoughts? Like, what, what are your thoughts standing here in this place, especially after walking through the hospital itself? It's a very peaceful location. I can see why they would bring their dead here to remember them by someplace close. So it was big farm fields for a while. It looks like the field up the hill actually may still be producing food, which is also very cool. It was it was self-sufficient, like mm -hmm. self-sustainable, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they, they did their own meats, dairies, and vegetables. And in a way, it became a big community. And I think there was a lot of love here, a lot of love and care. Oh, the sun's coming back out. How, how strange is it that it rains, that mm -hmm. it rained when we got here to the cemetery and only at the cemetery? The trees were thirsty. The trees were thirsty. But they knew that we were coming to pay our respects, here to tell their story in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time to Danvers, Massachusetts, visiting Danvers State Hospital, which is now an apartment building with people living in it that has stories just as important as back whenever there used to be patients living here. Until next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. Just come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 